Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Thank you all for joining us uh, this evening for our uh, diversity uh, panel. My name is Tommaso Canetta. I'm the Associate Director for Diversity Recruiting here at MIT Sloan. I'm delighted to see you all here and to welcome you to MIT Sloan's campus for tonight's event. Um, this is uh, the uh, final event in our week-long series, our Diversity Week series of events that we hosted this week. Uh, which I started out my week on Sunday in LA. Uh, we go to DC, to New York, uh, and now rallying out here in Cambridge. Uh, with some fantastic events uh, with prospective applicants uh, and our students and alums who have been sharing their stories uh, and their experiences with the MIT Sloan community with all of you. Um, you know, this has been an initiative that we started last year, um, and we've been excited to, to have this as a way to showcase the diverse uh, and inclusive community with our prospective applicants. Um, this is something that MIT Sloan is you know, absolutely committed to, um, you know, fostering that diverse and inclusive community, fostering that environment of uh, equity and diversity and inclusion on our campus in so many ways and across so many different um, uh, areas and demographics across um, our student body, uh, across our faculty, across our staff. It's something that um, we're committed to across uh, you know, the uh, school as well, from faculty who are doing research on uh, diversity and equity in the workplace to um, students uh, in our student senate who we'll hear from uh, this evening and some of the initiatives they've been working on uh, to the staff committees uh, that have been looking at issues around diversity, inclusion, and equity um, here at MIT Sloan. So uh, tonight you'll have a chance to hear from those students and alums, so you won't have to listen to me too, too much. Um, we're going to let them share their stories and their experiences with you directly. So um, we hope through the conversation this evening you'll get a sense uh, of the Sloan community and the environment here. Um, and so we'll have uh, some questions for the panel. We'll have a little bit of time for you all to ask questions. Uh, and then we'll also um, have an opportunity at the end of the evening to break up uh, for networking. And we have some other students and alums who will be joining us who um, will introduce them a little bit uh, for that question. Evening. Um, but for now, I'd like to pass it off to our uh, panel. So um, I'd like to first introduce Carrie James, who is uh, a graduate of the class of 2001 uh, of the MBA program. Um, she'll be moderating the panel tonight. She'll talk about herself, uh, and she'll introduce the rest of our um, fantastic panel. So I'll pass it off to you all. Thanks, Tomaso. That's great. Um, so hi, good afternoon, good evening, wherever people who are dialing in or live streaming from. So I'm Carrie James. I am from the class of 2001. Um, it is slightly frightening that it is, I am closer to my 20 year reunion than um, I'd like to be. Uh, but that's still true. Um, I have been involved with MIT Sloan and the alumni community quite intensively since I graduated. So I've been on the alumni board. The, the dean started the alumni board about five years ago. I was on the initial part of the alumni board and I just rolled off of the alumni board only to join the uh, Dean's Advisory Council on Diversity. So uh, they just wouldn't let me <laughs> leave. <laughs> no, um, but I really enjoy doing this kind of work and coming back to Sloan because it really re-energizes me about the community here and the people here and the kind of work that is being done here. Um, and it has been, it's, it's always fun to see and meet new people that are across the MIT network and across the MIT community. And I have been very fortunate in that I have been able to meet so many different vintages of MIT students. Um, I also actually went to MIT undergraduate, as well as not concurrently, okay, not one after another. I left for years first, and then decided to come back and, and was really happy that I, I came back to MIT Sloan um, to just kind of put that like time period in perspective. Uh, well, I was coming here about now, 20 years ago, to start Sloan. And the people that I know um, now and are closest friends of mine are people that I met here. And in fact, I was on an hour and a half phone call with one of my friends the other night, one of my classmates the other night. I were working on some kind of venture capital deal with another friend of mine who's got a business that he started up in Silicon Valley um, and other people, a lot of our other alums are also investing in that deal. I mean, it's been an incredible community to be with and to work with. And it's, I've been very fortunate in knowing people from you know, earlier vintages, later vintages, and I, I like to use the word vintage because I like wine. So, um, uh, and so it's, I, I've been really fortunate, like I've worked with Saley on some projects uh, over the, with the Dean's Committee, uh, the Dean's Alumni Board. And so it's very fun that it is and a very interesting, interactive, and dynamic community. And I feel like I meet, every time I meet somebody new, it's like, 
wow, that's really cool, or something is, oh, that's really interesting, and something grabs me about it, and it really re-energizes me to be here, so I'm excited about being here. I work for an asset management company called Boston Partners. I've been there 12 years. I um, am responsible for all of our distribution and all of our sales outside the United States, so I kind of joke, in order to see any one of my clients, I have to travel across an ocean, uh, which, is, <laughs> which is really true. Um, so I'm excited to be here, and I'm going to ask each of the panelists to um, introduce themselves, state your name and your class year, and also tell me uh, and tell the crowd one of your favorite Sloan memories. I think that's a that's a great place to begin. Yeah. Hello, everyone. It's great to see such a packed room. <laughs> Future Sloanies, I see you all. Um, my name is Saley Kanile Lynch, and I'm headed into my second year here at Sloan. I am a student body co-president, um, so I represent uh, all of you future students. Um, <laughs> there'll, there'll be a new president by then. But um, yeah, so I, um, what was the other thing? My most memorable memory? Your favorite, favorite Sloan memory. Favorite Sloan memory. Oh, there have been so many. Well, if it's an academic memory, because <laughs> there are also non-academic <laughs> memories. But um, I think it really was the first time that I met my core team. So at Sloan, you're broken into oceans, and there are 60 people in each. Um, it changes, you know, but approximately that. Um, and then within that, there are smaller core teams. And that's the group that you are going to be working with for your entirety of your first uh, sem uh, first year with your your or first semester rather. Um, so that is a group that you get to know really, really, really well. And this is the first time we were all meeting each other. So um, we were tasked with building a raft. And that is really when everyone's personality comes out because you're either going to sink or you're going to float. <laughs> and we floated for half of it, but we ended up sinking. But what was great was <laughs> that, <laughs> not that we sail sunk, but that we had this amazing bonding experience. And you just really get to see how everyone thinks differently. And I think that that's something that really reflects the aura of the students here is everyone's coming from different backgrounds. Um, everyone brings something totally, completely different to the table, and together it creates an amazing experience. And so through building that raft, that was really um, the first moment in launching into my Sloan experience and, and really, I think, is what makes this space so unique. Hey, everyone. My name is Octavio Sandoval, and for all the Latinos here, Octavio Sandoval. Um, <laughs> How are you? Um, so currently, I work in Boston, so not too far from here. I am a director at a, a life insurance company, but I'm on the investment management team. We manage about $160 billion, and I'm responsible for allocating money to private equity strategies, not only that, but also uh, looking for co-investments and direct private placements. So with that said, all right, so my favorite slow memory Oh, man, that's very difficult, but I remember, you know, the study tours, uh, the, which was an, a way for someone like me who came from humble beginnings, single, you know, parent home, to, you know, go and really experience the world. Um, I got to go on the Southeast uh, Asia study tour. We started in uh, Singapore, then we went to Thailand, and then ended in Vietnam. And that was a breathtaking experience, and I would never, never, ever forget that. Hi, everyone. My name is Pam, uh, Pam Bulloy, but my middle name is Roque. I was married to a Haitian. Oh, I am married to a Haitian, but I have that <laughs> Latino <laughs> uh, root. Um, I'm currently a business development. Um, I currently work in business development at Google um, on the Google travel products, so Google Flights and Google Hotels. So if you don't use those products today, google.com slash travel. <laughs> a, small, a small plug. Um, so my favorite uh, Sloan memory, and I guess life memory, is that I had my son my first year uh, at school. And the reason why it's kind of like also my favorite Sloan memory is that it was so impressive, the community 
that came around. Like it really does take a village to raise a child and Sloan was my village, right? Like folks were like, you don't get to stop your schooling and sc everyone was like there bringing me lunch, bringing me dinner, making sure that I was getting through the program, helping me with notes if I wasn't able to attend class um, and really making sure that they were there for me. And so that's a really a reflection of the community that you'll have here. Hi everyone, my name is Amaka Neji. Um, I currently work at Deloitte in their consulting arm, um, specifically in the human capital practice. So that means I help companies with their workforce issues. Um, let me think, uh, favorite memory, there's so many, you're right. Um, but <laughs> off the top of my head, um, I would have to say it's related to the Africa Business Club. Um, so I was co-president of the Africa Business Club um, at my time at Sloan. And I really, really enjoyed it for two reasons. One was the Morocco trek. So unlike a study tour where you like get class credit, um, this was pure fun. Um, so <laughs> this was being on camels. This was doing hot air balloon rides. And um, we had a rave in the middle of the Sahari Desert. Um, it was just like amazing. It was so much fun. Um, and the other reason was um, we also held um, the Africa Business Conference. So it's one of the premier conferences um, along with HBSs. I'm not sure if anyone's attended that as well. Um, but it was amazing just to get like the diaspora all in the same room together talking about some really interesting um, issues. And I feel like Sloan really puts on premier conferences um, like the Sports Analytics Conference is a big one um, that they got like Barack Obama to come. You know, we couldn't get someone like that for the business club, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it was still amazing uh, nonetheless. Well, Amaka, why don't we yeah. stay with oh. you? you? You brought up a good point is the activities that you were involved in at Sloan and kind of elaborate on what kind of activities and clubs and things that you were also involved in and we can bring that question back down. Yeah, so I, I feel I almost like over-indexed on uh, taking on activities, but I think that's just the type of person I am. Um, so a big part of what I did was I was a member of Sloan Senate. So you have the opportunity to run essentially for Senate and you represent your um, cohort, which is oceans. Um, and so I was the Indian Ocean um, and representing my ocean there, but also taking on diversity inclusion. So I was um, leading diversity efforts um, there as well. So that, that was a major part of my time here at Sloan. Um, with that, I was also on the broader like graduate student committee. Um, so working with um, other graduate schools here at Sloan to talk about um, diversity issues there. Um, I also was leading the Africa Business Club, which I mentioned as well. I was also a member of the Black Business Students Association. Um, I was a member of Sloan LGBTQ, which I think now is called Sloan Pride or Pride. I'm not sure. Pride? Yep, great. Um, so that was like um, also a huge part of my time here, just hanging out with um, those people. Um, I was also a member of the Leadership Club. <laughs> so that was... Um, <laughs> can go on, I should stop. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that was um, really around building leadership skills and also looking more at human capital issues. So how can you um, embed leadership um, within organizations? Um, so if you have questions about, you know, being um, black or being African here, if you have questions about um, being LGBT, um, being a woman, anything, leadership opportunities, um, feel free to to grab me um, afterwards. So Maka's like on one side of the spectrum and I was <laughs> probably on the other side. Um, so two things that were really important to me. The first one um, is the AMA, so Ask Me Anything. I was really involved in that and coordinating those events. So basically it's a opportunity to get students to be panelists like us and you get to ask the students anything with regards to the topic. So we would host um, for example, we were recently talking about dual income households. That was something that we had a topic and we brought in couples and everyone in the room was able to ask these sensitive questions that maybe you might not know someone that you want to ask um, and create this like really safe environment to address topics that maybe you might not feel comfortable addressing elsewhere. So that's something that was important to me. The second piece was I got to plan a study tour, which um, Octavia was mentioning, but really planning it behind the scenes 
putting together the curriculum as well as uh, the course and like where everyone gets to go during the two weeks uh, stay was really fun and challenging and really got to stretch my uh, leadership skills. All right, great. So just like Amaka, I was very involved on campus. Um, so let's let's take a step back. So I had to I had the role of putting on two hats. So not only was I black, but I'm also Latino, so I'm Afro-Latino. So I was um, in leadership of the Hispanic Business Club. And then not only that, I was in leadership in the club that's uh, focused on uh, being a black student at MIT Sloan. Um, I was also on the Student Senate, and I had a strong affinity towards diversity and inclusion initiatives, so I, I done that. But on the fun side, what I did was I was uh, the president of the Vintners Club, so the Wines Club, and so I was responsible for champagne events. So <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, pretty much a highlight, and I try to have events every two weeks to you know go over wines and different vintages, different regions, and just you know talk to you know your your Sloan community about why you think this wine is great. Um, what else have I done? And so you got my background. So I'm in asset management or investment management. At Sloan, I was a member of the Sloan Investment Management Club. And the highlight of that club was that we got to meet Warren Buffett uh, and ask him questions about you know, his investment philosophy. So that's, so that's uh, a highlight there. I've been in, involved in so many other um, clubs, but those are the top uh, clubs that I want to share. Thank you. So it's great to hear so many people involved in all the clubs that I'm a part of now. And, <laughs> and now I'm like, I need to recruit y'all. <laughs> um, because uh, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, am the head of um, Student Senate. And uh, we have made it a priority, diversity and inclusion, as something that we are really committed to working on uh, and continuing to build upon all the amazing work that prior students did. Um, one thing that um, Kara mentioned earlier is that we have this Dean's Advisory Council. And that's something that is new and uh, to, it was a, several years in the making, really. And um, just to speak to the power and the voice that students have here, we had sent a letter outlining what we wanted to see in the school moving forward, and that was a chief diversity officer. And um, to send something like that to the dean, you know, in other settings, you might not get um, such an amazing response as we did and proactive response. He immediately sat down with all of us, and I think part of why it was such a strong response was the amount of input that we received and support that we had from alums and from faculty and from staff. And that just really speaks to the ethos of the school. It's everyone coming together to really support an initiative like this. It can't happen um, with just one person. So um, because of that, we have an advisory council. We're going through steps that you're already seeing changes on campus, to be honest. Um, you know, Events like this are amazing and incredible, and as Tomaso said, just started a year ago. So this is all a part of a movement and really uh, showcasing MIT's commitment to diversity. Um, so with that, I am also uh, part of BBSA, Black uh, Business Students Association, which I want to shout out Bo right here, who is uh, the events coordinator. So party, party. if you want to go to an yeah. awesome party. Also, I have to shout her out because she was just featured in the MIT uh, news. And so if you have anything about startups and you're really passionate, she's awesome. She's doing her own startup. So definitely shout out to her. We got to, you know, support each other out here. Um, and then I'm also a part of African Business uh, Club and uh, Women in Business, which is um, something that is a huge opportunity here. Um, if you're interested in all different types of um, professions, specifically consulting, they, they help women uh, who, you know, 
just want to pursue different paths and help them get there through their network. It's a really strong network, which you can talk about too. <laughs> um, and then also, I didn't mention my um, summer position, but I'm at ESG Environmental Social Governance uh, Associate at Manulife, uh, John Hancock this summer. So if you're interested in impact investing, uh, there's a club here that I was active in um, that I highly suggest. So yeah, I'll end there. Oh, that's great. Um, I, uh, I it's funny because a lot of the clubs stay the same and then clubs evolve. So I was in Sloan Women in Management. I was one of the co-presidents of that. We were the minority business club and then it all splintered into like the different groups, which is awesome because then there's that energy around understanding different parts of business that are diverse anyway. Um, and I was involved in so many things, but I have to say, one of my, I'm so surprised, none of you mentioned the C function as a favorite memory. <laughs> and I loved the C functions. <laughs> C functions are parties on Thursday nights where, that are usually organized by different clubs and different groups. And as a standout memory, the Brazilian C function was off the chain. I mean, it was outstanding. And I hear that it's usually still very good. So highly recommend the C functions. Um, <laughs> But I, as I did mention that I was an undergraduate at MIT, and it is nice that we are part of the broader MIT community. So can anybody speak to interactions they may have had with the broader university? Um, and I mentioned that because I worked on, for example, what is now the 100K event, um, which was 25K when I was here. <laughs> Oh, inflation. Um, <laughs> and a lot of the groups were a mix across campus from engineering, humanities, Sloan, kind of everywhere. Um, and that was kind of one of the highlight events for me uh, around working with the other part of campus. Um, I also took French for a while and promptly dropped it right before the, due the drop date because it was just a little too much work. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> French is still my best second language, I have, you know, <laughs> but uh, so has anybody done any work across campus using leveraging being part of MIT? Yeah, so I can start. Um, so it's amazing because you can cl take classes anywhere on campus, basically, uh, if you can fit into your schedule. And so I took a course at Department of Urban Studies and Planning. And that is an amazing space. I worked in government for about four and a half years. And so for me, it was important to, you know, continue to do research related to my prior um, life and, and work and passion. And so I took a class there and I just met an entire di different community of students. Um, and then to be able to work with professors and expand my network was an amazing opportunity. So definitely recommend taking classes across campus. All right, so to that point, I did take a Python class in the undergraduate level. And so I wanted to take it for you know credit, but then I said, you know what, after the first day, this is too much. So I took it for <laughs> pass fail, which is fine. Um, but on a serious note, um, there's a mission that we started at the Student Senate a couple of years ago, one MIT. So make it a conscious effort for the graduate students, the MBA students to build a partnership with the undergrads. And so I, in particular, was um, interested in developing relationships with the undergrads that look like me. And so I uh, partnered with the undergrad local um, Hispanic chapter and then the chapter for African Americans. And so we, we essentially became like a mentor-mentee uh, relationship. And so we still keep in contact um, and I, it's a, it's a beauty of working in Boston so that I could come back whenever I need to, to have coffee to check in with, with my students. Anybody else? Anybody? Yeah. Um, so I would say on a more formal level, um, being a part of the graduate student body council, um, I worked a lot with different, um, graduate students. 
um, looking at common issues such as like affordable housing, um, representation of women, um, other, you know, underrepresented minorities and kind of brainstorming and coming together on how we can solve um, some of those issues and make um, a better MIT community. Um, and then I would also say informally, just a lot of my entrepreneurship classes um, tended to have graduate students from different programs, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, one of my projects was actually working on um, a guacamole company, <laughs> which was amazing because we got to sample a lot of guac. <laughs> but going to uh, doing their go to market strategy. Um, so that was really fun working with um, different graduate students from across different programs. That's fantastic. Uh, so something that's near and dear to my heart is that we get to engage as alumni with current students and other alums, right? It's part about partly about building that network. So maybe if um, either while you were at Sloan or after Sloan, you can talk about how you've engaged the alumni community and how that has been helpful to to you personally or professionally. I would say 100% professionally. So um, Deloitte, the human capital practice actually currently doesn't recruit um, at MIT or actually any other business school now that I think about it. Um, so it was really important to make sure that I was networking to get a job um, at Deloitte. And so I reached out to a bunch of older Sloanies, um, either through the leadership club or just who I had like gone to the career central and they're like, hey, like, check these people out. Um, so I hit them up and I was so amazed at the responsiveness of the alums. Um, they sat down with me, they reviewed my resumes, they coached me um, when I was like negotiating for salaries, they helped me there. Um, so I was just really, really surprised. Um, well, actually, not surprised because I feel like there is a motto here, Sloanies helping Sloanies. Um, and it's, it's, Something that's true here um, while you're at school, you're always able to reach out to another Sloney for anything and people will drop whatever they're doing and help you. Um, but also as an alum, I, I really felt that same um, kind of mantra um, come to life. So definitely from a professional perspective, um, alumni were um, essential to my success. Yeah, I would <laughs> plus one to that. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, Sloanies are everywhere. So at work, my boss is a Sloanie, um, and there are tons of Sloanies within the Google community. And it's so important to kind of bring that community to your workplace. Um, we share a lot of the same memories, um, and you know the experiences are similar. And being able to commemorate and remember them together. I would say that a lot of them are more than willing to drop everything to help out with any type of question that you have and making sure that you know you take that first step and you reach out to them either via LinkedIn or the alumni network um, listserv. I am always willing to help as well. Um, so feel free to contact us. We'll give you guys our cards. Um, and for me, it's really important as an alum to come back to the school and be part of these engagements, get to know the prospective students, um, and as well as the students that are in the current class today, if they have any per professional questions or even personal questions that they have about their experience. I echo that. <clears throat> so my, uh, well, he's not my boss, but he's high up there. He's an executive. He's the deputy chief investment officer, and he covers all of Asia. Um, he is a Sloney, and I remember my first day um, at Mass Mutual in 2017, I looked through the infinite connection, which is a way for all Sloanies to connect with each other. You get everyone's email, uh, cell phone number, even address. And so I just typed in Mass Mutual just to see who's at the company. And I found, found this uh, deputy chief investment officer. I sent him a note in the subject, Sloney at Mass Mutual. He responded within an hour. And I was shocked by that. And so. Uh, we we had coffee, uh, probably like 10 minutes, but he wanted to, you know, increase the number of Sloanies at uh, Mass Mutual. And so I started at Mass Mutual in 2017. So one of our first initiatives was to start uh, recruiting efforts here. And so we were able to get someone uh, from the Masters of Finance program here at Sloan. And so this, I tell you this because once you find someone at at your company who, you know, is surprised to, you know, actually see another Sloney, that could 
go you could go extremely far and so we still try to you know t you know i use them to give me feedback because it, sometimes it's hard to get you know constructive feedback from your uh, direct up and so i would say hey you know could you find out what people are thinking about me and so so far mm -hmm. everything's been positive <laughs> thank god knock on wood but but yeah so i i use that and then uh i of course um any you know Sloan Alumni Network and Boston activities I take uh, part in. So there's a lot of happy hours, there's a lot of trips. So I try to do those as well. And then um, I'm definitely involved with the, uh, the MIT Sloan Club of New York. Um, in fact, two weekends ago, well, actually last weekend, I took my brother to a Red Sox uh, Yankees game, which was uh, very discounted uh, because of the Sloan uh, connection. So yeah, I, I definitely try to use uh, Sloan in every aspect of my life. Um, well, I think to echo my earlier statement, um, some of the initiatives through Senate that I've led wouldn't have been part of, possible without the alumni network. And I recall when I first met Harry and Sam, Sam is an alum and he so everyone told me, you got to talk to this man, Sam. He's incredible, and he's going to help you with this diversity initiative. So I emailed this man, and then he, here he is inviting 10 strangers to his house for dinner with his mom and his dad and his three kids. And I'm like, this is incredible. A, stra a stranger letting 10 other strangers into his house. And that just speaks to the community here at Sloan. Um, you know, just welcoming you in in every aspect. And I'm headed to Cameroon on Sunday to pursue phase two of my startup. And that wouldn't have been possible without the support of alums as well. Um, I leveraged the network. I had known of another alum who is a part of the African Business Club who had started his uh, own initiative in Cameroon called Casa Vita, uh, cassava flower, and I'm looking into agricultural resources powered through solar there. And so he's been extremely helpful through the process, as has the network of amazing startup opportunities here. So Legatum, which is right across the street, gave me funding, which you can access if you have a startup idea in a developing country. They'll pay for your flight. And then Sandbox, which is around the other cross campus, which I highly recommend if you're interested in a startup, who, if you just have an idea, they will support it, likely. So I mean, the resources are incredible if you're interested in doing your own startup. Um, everyone here is not waiting to get a job, they're waiting to, they're not waiting around, they're creating the jobs they want to see in the world. And so that is just speaks to like the broader ecosystem here. And I think um, that kind of brings us to another interesting point about, you're talking about entrepreneurship and a lot of the opportunities that are here. From your experience at Sloan, what educational experience or classroom experience did you take away and bring it to work? Like what was the thing that translated most into your work? <laughs> like, yes. I do that yet. He's still a student, I guess. <laughs> um, so cover your ear, Tommaso. But um, to be honest, the number one thing you could take from an MBA program is the network. Um, and I, you learn a lot in the classrooms, but is it really applicable? That's debatable. But, <laughs> um, but I will tell you the my first core semester, which was brutal. Um, so the, to put things in perspective, you're taking six classes, right? And the reason why Sloan does this is so that you can have flexibility to take classes that you want outside of the core semester. And so the first semester was extremely hard. And so I had to learn how to trust, right? We, so we talked about, you know, core teams and meeting your core team and building a raft. But when you haven't, you know, six classes and each class has a deliverable, there's only so much you could do. And so you can't control the process. So you have to, so I had to learn to trust. And so that's applicable to, you know, work as, so I have, you know, a team. And so there are people who are, you know, fairly young. And so I have to just, you know, trust that they could, you know, do the work as opposed to me 
micromanaging or controlling the process. So that's applicable. Another thing is, you know, learning, you know, time management and learning how to manage expectations, right? So there's been times where I was extremely swamped during my uh, core semester and I would say, well, I probably won't get to that this week. Mm -hmm. And so I brought that same mentality to, you know, work and it actually benefits me because you are managing the expectations of people who are above you and you're managing the expectations of people who are below you. And so when I, you know, when I'm at the office and I say, you know what, I have this on my plate, um, I'm happy to, you know, get to it, but it's not likely that I'll get to it this week. Is that okay? And, it, and people will respond, thank you for telling me that. And I don't feel, you know, some type of way when, you know, you know, they're like, okay, well, we, we'll wait another week. So um, I'm happy to, you know, bring that mentality from Sloan to the workplace. And so far it has been working out for me. Maybe I'm a little different from Octavio here, but I loved all of my courses that I took. And it was one of the reasons why I chose Sloan. Uh, just the breadth of courses that you can take all the way from analytical to, you know, communications and developing those skills. And to me today, a lot of the, the thinking and the way that it changes the way that you think. So like I'm thinking of systems dynamic, which is a class that you have to learn the software, which today I don't really use. And if I if you ask me, I probably wouldn't know how to use it. But forcing you to think about the system and the cause and effect and how does that overall and that bigger picture for me it's very relevant to the work that i do as you design strategies and you go about implementing it what um what do you implement today that could have ripple effects on everything else um the other piece that that you talked about was you know working together in a team so previous to sloan i was in an analytical function it was my work and i was responsible for the outcome of that work and i was very comfortable doing that um, and coming to Sloan, you're in an environment where, where a lot of the deliverables that you have are group projects. Um, and so that's a little difficult for someone who's not used to that. Being able to manage expectations as well as like when someone is not doing the work, how do you communicate that and provide feedback in an effective way so that you can work together as a team to deliver the outcome. And so that is very applicable to the, the role and the function that I'm at today because a lot of the work is is collaborative um, and does require team effort. Great. So um, I say Sloan definitely helped set me up for success in consulting um, for a variety of reasons, some of which I'll delve into. So um, one is that team-based culture um, that Pam was talking about. So, you know, with your core team, even with projects um, within your coursework, um, just working together and being able to manage different personalities and perspectives um, to drive to kind of one common goal um, and get a great deliverable or product um, to the client. So that definitely, um, the way that the coursework was set up at Sloan definitely mirrored kind of the typical consulting um, case team. Um, another thing that I found was amazing was the actual academics here at Sloan. Um, so prior to Sloan, I was actually in brand consulting. So I did a lot around shaping the customer experience, um, specifically in aviation. And I knew that when I came to Sloan, I kind of wanted to make a shift to look more at the employee experience. So how are companies, you know, teaming together? How can they be strategically designed um, for maximum impact for not only their employees, but also for customers and shareholders. Um, and I took phenomenal classes here. Um, so one was people analytics that was with Professor Emilio uh, Castilla. Um, and he literally sat down with me um, after hours, was really hands on with me, helped me with my case consulting interviews um, for Deloitte, and like gave me all these frameworks that I ended up using um, in my interviews and actually got uh, my job at Deloitte. Um, I also took um, strategic org design with Professor Thomas Malone. He is like world renowned. He actually has this book called The Future of Work. Definitely check it out if you're like interested in kind of how employees will be in the future. Um, but it was amazing to get to work with him one on one here at Sloan. And then when I actually joined Deloitte, I helped run um, the MTech conference here at MIT, um, which is kind of focused on um, bringing together 
um, you know, sweet C-suite executives, sorry, to talk about like common issues facing um, organizations. And he actually was one of the premier speakers there. So I got to see him and, you know, enjoy his coursework here at Sloan, read his book, but then also got to um, work with him in a professional capacity at Deloitte. So I feel like a lot was exactly relevant um, to consulting and also to my kind of human capital work um, at Deloitte. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. So why don't we open it up to some questions before I have a final question for them, but any questions from the audience? Yes, sir, in the back. And I will uh, repeat your question if um, we don't have a mic back there because we're live streaming, so we have to use microphones. <laughs> and where your expectations met. So the question is, um, as diverse students, uh, why did you pick Sloan and where your expectations met? Maka, do you want to start? Yeah, I can start. Um, so I picked Sloan for the name. <laughs> um, so MIT has a really great name. Um, and so I, I mentioned before, I was in brand strategy consulting. I was definitely more creative, like if you're going to typify me, I'm 100% a creative. Um, and I knew that I wanted to look at my personal brand and expand it. And so I love that with MIT everyone thinks I can do really difficult math. Um, like, <laughs> I kid you not, I kid you not. So after I decided to come to Sloan, I was in li living in New York at the time. Um, I was wearing like an MIT shirt, walking down by Bryant Park. I see this guy in a suit. He spots me. He like runs across the avenue. He comes up to me. He's like, oh my gosh. Are you, are you gonna be, are you at MIT? And I was like, well, I will be attending. And he's like, I have this really hard algorithm that I'm trying to figure out. Can I get your business card? And I'm like, I can't help you, but I can find someone who will. Um, <laughs> and I felt even like with consulting interviews, people kind of tend not to question you um, as much when it comes to the quantitative side of things. People kind of just assume uh, you know a lot of stuff. So I love that. That I totally use that to my advantage almost every day. Um, so that, <laughs> that was one of the things um, that attracted me to Sloan. But I would also say I love that people were so down to earth here. They're so genuine. No one's pretentious. In fact, you'll probably be ostracized if you're pretentious here. <laughs> so if you're looking for like a school that, you know, you'll be hiding books in the library or doing, no, no, don't come here. We don't want you. Um, people are just so amazing. Um, everyone is almost your best friend here. Um, and so I really like that. I, I felt that I could bring my authentic self to the table. I felt that I could say, hey, I don't, I don't have the answer for this. Can someone help me? And other people would genuinely help me and care about me. Um, so I say the brand, having that, people don't question me. And also the community, people help me when I ask for help, um, were two things that really attracted me to Sloan. Mm -hmm. So for me, to be honest, I didn't choose Sloan at first. I actually paid my deposit to a school in Philly. Um, and I was, <laughs> so my, my husband was a Sloaney. He graduated in 2016. I knew about the community. I loved it. I applied and I was really excited, but I paid my deposit to another school. What made the difference for me was I was like, okay, fine. I'll still go to the admit weekend, which happened to be after the deposit was due for the other school. I came to the admit weekend here. And when I told them that I was still deciding between Sloan and the other school, the community here, they were interested in what like me and why I was making the choice and what I could do. And they were asking these types of questions. And I reflected back on how, I, when I presented the fact that I was choosing between two schools at the other school, they were more pretentious. They were like, why are you choosing Sloan? It doesn't have a brand name. It doesn't have this X, Y, Z in comparison. And to me, I was like, that's not how I would answer that question if somebody asked me. And so mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I, I lost some money, but <laughs> it was well worth it. I'm sure you made it back already. <laughs> um, so I'm just curious, um, any MLT people here? All right. So I was a member of the MLT MBA prep. And so this was 
actually part of my homework assignment to, you know, research schools. And so the best way to research school is to actually go to the schools and meet with people. And so I did a diversity uh, panel uh, while I was in the audience um, years ago. And I got to talk to, you know, so many of the current Sloanies, and I felt that their messages uh, resonated with me. Um, to Amaka's uh, point, nobody, uh, it wasn't a transactional film. And they really cared about about you. And so I remember uh, when I was a prospective student, you may not know him or you may, but Alan Kristoff, um, he, um, I sent him an email. Uh, he was the coordinator for the diversity weekend. And I asked them to, you know, introduce me to, you know, more Sloanies and at two o'clock in the morning, he responded and CC various uh, Sloanies. And so I got to, you know, call these Sloanies up and ask them, you know, what are their perspectives on Sloan? And, and they actually kept it real with me. Um, they talked about the pros and they talked about the cons. And I haven't experienced that at any other school. And, and I, I try to, you know, share that with you by, you know, telling you what I think and, you know, you know, not having a filter. Um, and so that's what I felt at Sloan. I felt, com I felt comfortable and, and that's what I was looking for in a school. But then another um, reason why I liked Sloan so much compared to the other opportunities that I got, it really challenges the status quo. Um, nobody feels, you know, above, you know, status. They always ask difficult questions. And you may not even know their background. So there was a classmate that I had, and he mentioned, you know, how how I could, you know, reframe how to think of this problem. And I said, oh well, that's that's very astute observation by you. You know, what's your background? And he said, oh, I went to a technology firm. And I was like, what's this technology firm? And he said, oh, Google. And I was like, why wouldn't you just tell me that? You know, I feel like at another school they would have been like, oh. I, I'm from Google. I've seen this problem before. Here's how you solve it. But he just questioned me, and I was like, "Oh!" And he challenged me to just reframe how I, you know, thought about the problem. And so that 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 says a lot about the culture because people at Sloan are extremely smart and they have the answers, but they want you to grow as well. So they'll just challenge you to, you know, rethink how you think of these problems. And then the last reason, which is very personal to me, so. Um, when I visited campus, so I visited campus multiple times. So the first time was Diversity Weekend. So I wanted to come again to see how Sloan is uh, without the Diversity Weekend. And so I felt like there was an opportunity for me to come to the school where I think that compared to other schools, um, there aren't enough of us. And so that's one of the reasons why I worked extremely hard to get on the Student Senate to work on diversity and inclusion efforts. And to be honest, I was, I was um, taken away by the fact that Sloan really wants to improve diversity and inclusion here. And the number one issue that we've been battling is that, you know, they would, you know, really have partnerships with MLT, various programs to increase the pipeline, but it just boils down to money. And so um, that I'm still working on coming up with ideas. I'm working with Tommaso um, on a you know, regular basis on coming up with ideas to increase the diversity um, pipeline. But I thought I could come here and, and you know, make uh, Sloan aware of, you know, okay, well, Octavio, he's from Central America. We need more people from Central America. Octavio, he's from the South Bronx. We need more people from, you know, underrepresented uh, areas. And so I was very pleased that Sloan has already put into place a plan and wanted students like us on this panel to, you know, help execute. And so that's still an ongoing process. But that's one of the reasons why I come back on, the, on a regular basis. Wow. Well, everyone, well, I can only echo. I can't beat any of those comments. So, uh, 
Yeah, I think it, for me at least, it came down to admit weekend. And, you know, I came with the impression of, okay, these people are going to try to impress me and tell me I should come here. And they really wanted to know what my thought process was and if I had any questions. I was like, ooh, I like this. They're playing hard to get. This is like <laughs> a boyfriend who doesn't want to date me. Okay. <laughs> I was like, this is a place for me. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like that. But um, more importantly, I think it's it comes down to the same concept that was just discussed, which was that they want people who want to be here. And, and they want people who are going to really bring leadership and passion, who are humble but smart. Um, and I think that speaks to why there's so many um, students of color on our Senate. These are the leaders of our student body, and they're leading all these different clubs. They're, you know, in so many ways seen on campus as leaders. And so to me, that was really important to see. But more importantly, it was something that I want to be a part of. So um, that's why I chose a school. And they're not afraid to have difficult conversations. I mean, I had the opportunity to sit in the dean's office and talk to him about diversity. And that's not something that every dean is willing to talk about and have those hard conversations. And so I think that also really, you know, resonated with me. I wanted to be in a place that was open to having conversations that maybe they didn't always seem like safe conversations, you know, and were willing to talk about the difficult things. And I took a USA lab class where I went to uh, South Carolina to work on a project to uh, restore and preserve the history of Orangeburg as part of the civil rights movement. And we went to Alabama and we went and talked a lot about very difficult issues and we brought that information back to school and we had amazing conversations in the classroom about race. And so if you're interested in being a space that is bold, that wants to engage in pe with people from different places and different backgrounds, this is the place for you. Um, so I actually decided to go to Sloan um, in part because uh, I was really excited about coming back to Cambridge because I was living in New York at the time. Um, I didn't want to be a poor student in New York City, which was my other option. <laughs> No, that was real. That struggle was real. Okay. <laughs> Starbucks had just opened in New York City and I was going broke. Um, so that was part of it. And then I came up and I met some other students and current students and who would be my, who would become my colleague students. And um, I, I, you know, it just felt right to me. So there really wasn't a, you know, choice about it. Um, and I, I do recognize that sometimes there is a funding issue, right? There is a, I'm, I'm coming from slaving away at these different interesting companies, but I definitely have not put away $100,000 to go to MIT Sloan. Um, and so it's, it's one of the things that uh, the alumni have been really engaged about is helping to fund the fellowships and things around having more diversity in the school, which has been quite amazing. I mean, we were talking about this guy, Sam, who is from the class of 2003. So um, I'm still an older vintage than he is. Um, but just as an example, to talk about how the alumni are also dedicated to improving the uh, diversity around MIT Sloan, Sam and his wife, Alex, have put forward a fellowship for diverse student at Sloan. So they they pay a very good fellowship for a diverse student to come to Sloan. And they are deeply involved. So they meet with Sam and you get to chat with that guy and he really wants to, he built, helps build a community. And that's why he invites 10 strangers into his house because he really believes in the community. And, um, and those are the kind of alumni that are also kind of giving back and circling back into the school. Uh, and and it's, 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 an, it's an amazing set of people that I'm really proud to be a part of. Um, I've run over time, um, but I do, um, I, can I just have one more question or can I, okay, I, I, one more question. I'm sorry, you were quick to the draw. What, uh, here, I'll give you the mic. Hi, I want to ask, do you think it's better to like um, take MBA, MBA courses early on or like is it better to after like you have maybe 10 years of work experience in like a, I don't know, like a company or something? 
Okay, so the experience question um, I find is an interesting one, especially because I've, I've been out for a while and I'll, I'll let the other people, um, you know, think about it. Um, it does depend on where you are in building out your career and whether you feel like you need to spend more time doing that and what you think you want to do, how you're going to use the MBA, MBA afterwards. I, I was out for five years, four years um, before I came back to do the degree and I was, I, I thought it was perfect. Um, uh, there were some people who came in later there and there's other programs for people who are more out like 10 and 15 years. Uh, but it was also a great time to re-energize my network. So I felt really good about coming in at that point and finding out about more things to do with myself because I, I know that I don't know every single job in the universe to know whether I'd like to do that or not like to do this instead. And so I thought it was a good opportunity for me to open up my universe of what's interesting um, before I kind of got launched off into another career. In the interest of time. Go ahead. One second. The one second answer. Um, I don't so, know if Octavio has a one second I, answer. I, that's the problem. That's the problem. Um, so it depends on what you're trying to get. But the beauty of Sloan is that they have various programs. Um, so there's the fellows um, program, which is uh, for people right below the C-suite. And then there's the e MBA. And so these programs require at least 15 years of experience. And so I, I personally, the reason why I wanted to go to MBA was that I felt like, you know, I was, I hit a plateau and here were the skills that I had. And then here are the skills that the MBA would offer me. And then that should increase my trajectory. And so if you feel like you're not at a plateau or you don't want to transition, um, then you might want to, you know, you do a deep dive on what you're trying to get out of an MBA. That's a good point. So I want to thank everybody on the panel. Um, we'll be around uh, for a bit after for the networking session and things. So I'll turn it back over to Tommaso. Thank you. So I also want to thank our incredible panelists for sharing their stories and their experiences with you tonight. Um, next, we're going to transition into a, a networking session. Um, before we do that, I know we have several other current students, alums, incoming students uh, who've joined us this evening. So if I can invite them all to come up front um, and just introduce themselves real quick. Um, so if you guys want to actually stand in front of the panel just to make sure you're on the live stream. Um, if you could just very quick let us know who you are, program year, and what your current role is. Hi everyone. My name is Brooke Wages. My friends call me Bo. I am a dual degree student, so I'm earning my MBA at Sloan and just finished my first year. And I'm also earning a master's in public administration at Harvard Kennedy School. Um, I'm very active in um, Sloan Christian Fellowship. Um, our women's group, um, uh, oh yeah, women entrepreneurs. I'm also one of the chairs for Black Business Student Association and I'm a member of Africa Business Club. I came for social entrepreneurship and um, would love to speak to anyone about that in um, coordination between Harvard and B BU. So that's me. Thanks. That's awesome. So I love your presence, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, so my name is Alfonso Martinez. I'm a MBA 2020 as well. I am, uh, let me see, so consulting background focused in healthcare, then worked in healthcare technology, focused on entrepreneurship here at Sloan. I'm doing my own startup at Delta V, which is MIT's accelerator. Um, so any, anything related to healthcare, related to entrepreneurship or the intersection of those, happy to talk to anyone about that. Awesome. Uh, Jose Luis Ramos, I am. I haven't even started classes yet, so I'm class of uh, 2021. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're all next. You're all next. And um, I am actually program manager for Delta V. Um, so that was a really unique opportunity that they offered for admits only, and so that means I'm already working in the entrepreneurship center. Um, he's one of the companies, Alfonso Agi. Um, check out Agi, by the way, Agi.com. Um, he'll tell you later. Um, OAI.com. Hey, I, um, and what's it called? Yeah, really involved in entrepreneurship. And prior to that, I was in sales. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalia Alarcon, MBA class of 2018. A lot of people Woo! here. <laughs> um, and I'm currently a consultant at the Bridge Band Group. It's a nonprofit consulting firm. So if you have any questions about that, come find me. Thanks. 
Hi, my name is Okpe, um, MBA 2018 as well. Uh, uh, I'm a director of Fidelity Investments. Uh, I'm within the strategy and consulting group. So if anyone wants to talk about transitioning to consulting, I can help with that. My name is Stephanie Ogeden Preston. I am a Sloan 08. Um, when I was here, I was on the Senate, so glad to hear we're still representing there. Um, <laughs> I was in the Caribbean Ocean. I uh, worked at, you know, pirate. Um, I uh, was, I did Goldman in between my two years. I've had four jobs since I graduated. I was, I worked for a UT US grocer. I worked for a computer software startup. I was an independent consultant and I am currently in my fifth year at Citizens Bank and I am their COO of Digital Transformation. I'll also chat about, and it, yeah. Like, <laughs> 10 years, <laughs> come to Sloan, no. Um, and I also, uh, I don't know what you've been sharing in this past hour, but um, I also am raising three daughters and I had one when I started here, she was three and I had one on winter break, so. <laughs> and one more after that, I always forget about the baby, sorry. <laughs> That is awesome, and it is also very hard to follow, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Um, so my name's Romero Heyman. I'm a MBA class of 2012. Um, uh, after Sloan, I spent six years in consulting, primarily working with private equity clients, and for the last year or so, uh, I've been with a, an ed tech company um, just over uh, the, the, the water in the seaport, um, Cengage, and I lead their commercial strategy and pricing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keila Roberts. Um, I am actually a graduate student at Harvard, and I'm doing a visiting fellowship starting this fall at Sloan. <laughs> um, I did cross-trained in um, computational sciences and medicine, so I work at Microsoft and at MGH at the same time. <laughs> Thanks. That's it. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Ben DeLusma. Like Jose, I will be starting at MIT Sloan this fall. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I don't have much to say about the Sloan experience right now, but I was an applicant like three months ago. So if you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out. And my background is in quantitative marketing at Danielson Company. Great. Well, thank you all so much for joining us um, this evening. Like I said, we're gonna transition uh, and wrap up the formal presentation here, but we invite you to stick around and spread out across the room, grab some more snacks and drinks um, and chat with our students and alums who volunteer their time to be with us. If you have questions about the admissions process, myself um, and my colleagues from the admissions office. Um, so in the back, Asia Garcia, Lindsay Cope, uh, Jessica Cordero Wilson over there, um, and my colleague Katie Radal, who's also around, are happy to answer those questions. And then finally, I also want to to introduce Catherine Gammon, who's um, our director of student life uh, here at MIT Woo! Sloan. So she works. <laughs> Catherine works very closely with our students and our student clubs and organizations um, and is very passionate uh, about diversity and inclusion here at Sloan as well. So we're all available to chat with you for the next 45 minutes or so. So um, please feel free to um, connect with us. And for those joining uh, on our live stream, we're gonna conclude here. So thank you all for joining us um, and to everyone else, uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. <laughs>